Purple Couch. I'm your host, Jessica Lisk, and I'm here with the beautiful president of Western. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be on this side of the table. All right, Adam, let's get right into it. So, Pat, thank you once again for joining us. So great to have you. We missed you terribly. Yeah, I, I always love coming on, so thank you. Oh, no problem. So you've definitely have created the most controversy at the elections thus far. It's those red-hot pants of yours. Tell me about them. Where did you get these red pants? I got them at Masonville Mall, 1999. Uh, great deal. They la they're very soft and warm for the winter. And is this the reason why you went with the color red for your campaign? Just a lucky coincidence, really. Okay. The, were the pants first or the campaign color? You know? uh, the pants were first, but... Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, we have two debates under your belt now. How did you feel about them? Do you feel, you know, that there was a lot of competition? Yeah, uh, we, we've had a few debates at different faculty councils as well, and, yep. and definitely the heat is turning up now. Uh, we're starting to actually engage in a, in a good debate. So uh, I think they're going well. I think that people are starting to see that we have a lot of uh, concrete ideas for Western. Awesome. All right, well, maybe we'll jump in with one of our uh, so-called hard-hitting questions, right? All right, hit them hard, Adam. All right, so um, as, as you know, uh, on paper, both Vivek and Ashley have been faculty or constituent presidents in the past. Um, what achievements can you put your name to uh, on behalf of students? Uh, definitely. This year I'm a student senator, uh, so I get to do, meet with the administration and, and discuss some of these big issues, question them on, on their practices, and... Uh, start to see the mentality of the administration, which I think is like a huge advantage. It's been a very eye-opening experience to sort of assume um, working for students, everyone's on the same page, but uh, it's amazing to see the disconnect between what the USC thinks is best and what Western thinks is best. What have you, uh, what have you found those key issues that you've worked on to be? Key issues? I think uh, talking about per credit tuition, it's a long, like, that one is the hardest one. They really don't like it, but continuing to raise questions and making sure they know that it's an issue for students. Same with exam scheduling, uh, lack of academic counselors. These are all things that I've been talking with them about all year. Uh, the fall reading break, it was also you know, one of our, our big successes, I guess, this year. Um, but it's, it's more hearing, the, uh, hearing uh, President Chakma speak at the beginning of Senate meetings and hearing his opinions on the future of Western's relationship with the government and how that's gonna affect tuition and things like that. Yeah, that's definitely. Great. Um, so I just have a question. Uh, a lot of your initiatives are online, and we love this idea about the Idea Forum. However, the most voted upon um, ideas was more sex at Western and bigger toilet seats. So how do you plan on uh, implementing these changes? Those were the most voted, were they? <laughs> they were at one point of time. At one point, a long time ago, at the very, very beginning. I oh think no. the top one right now is healthy food on campus, but uh, okay. the... Uh, you know, the funny thing is, the, the more sex one was uh, put on there by khorwood at gmail.com. He's back. Oh, so he's back. He's back. Uh, that was the hacker from last year. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I, you know, I think that sometimes all the ideas are not up to the USC to implement. Bigger toilet seats, yeah, we can do a little research on that, but <laughs> we'll see. And we'll see how, how feasible is bigger toilet seats, Adam. I don't know. I won't push you on that one. I'll, uh, I'll let you escape that tough question. Oh, yeah, thank okay. you. All right. So I've, uh, I've been talking to some people about some of the debates that you guys have been involved in, and uh, one that came up as being particularly controversial was the engineering council debate. Ooh, um, yeah. And in that debate, uh, we heard that um, it was said that my biggest mistake this year was the Western Untold speech. And uh, I just wanted to uh, question whether or not um, you thought you were running the risk of repeating my mistake uh, with some of the aggressive stances in your platform. Um. I don't think so. I think that, um, first of all, I love this, I want to make it clear, I love this sentiment of Western Untold. Yeah. I think that it's pushing the USC to be a much better organization. I just think Western didn't see it that way. And so I think one thing we really need to do is work on partnerships with Western. Working together to solve these issues and, and helping them see our perspective. I think that, um, I think they really like some of USA's policies because they're research driven, they're data driven policies. And I think the USC sort of needs to play catch up with that. Um, as for our stance being uh, a radical, I, I'm not sure if it is. It's definitely principled, uh, and some of the uh, some of the lobby objectives are definitely long-term plans. Um, but per credit tuition is not radical. Uh, asking the city not to target students is not radical. These are things that are part of being a citizen and being part of being a student. Yeah, talking about Project Learn, um, I think some people will disagree with you and say that that is a definite radical position. What would you say to those people? Uh, I think that you got to start talking about it at some point. And right now, the USC isn't doing that. Right now, uh, as a student, I pay tax. 
and uh, I pay taxes through my rent. And at the same time, I, I go and I shop at Masonville Mall buying red pants, and I, I go down to Richmond Row, and I spend money there, and I think that at the end of the day, I'm a citizen of London. So sometimes I don't feel like I'm a citizen of London because I'm, I'm targeted, I'm, I'm given an extra tax. So I, I think that it's about time we start having this conversation, and I think it's about time the city starts to say, uh, all of our citizens are equal. It's not the real citizens of London and then students, it's just the citizens of London. Um, so I don't think it's radical. I think that we have a, a pretty good suggestion on how to replace that. Uh, the Good Neighbor campaign is a more positive outlook on how we can try and build community as opposed to enforcing community. Okay. What would be different about the Good Neighbor campaign than Project Learn? Um, will it be more than just Project Learn with a different name, or is there a specific uh, outcome you're looking for from the program? Yeah, I think that Project Learn is like a, a police program. It's an enforcement tool, zero tolerance. So the Good Neighbor campaign is something that we'd look to Western in the city and ourselves to partner on. And it'd be something that we'd be targeting uh, year-round London residents in the summer, saying, you may have students moving in next door. Please go introduce yourself. Make the first step. Um, I think that it all comes down to me is uh, it's amazing when you have a neighbor and you just think of him as that creepy, weird, bald guy, and then all of a sudden he becomes like John, and, and he has a name, and he's got kids, and he's got a wife, and he has a job, and all of a sudden you start to know a few things about his life, and you have a lot more respect. It's no longer the abstract, it's not your neighbor. And that's what we're really looking to do here is, is, uh, is to stop having a disconnect between neighbors and building real communities in London. Okay. What do you say to the citizens, uh, I've had a lot of experience with this this year, what do you say to the citizens who, uh, of London that suggest that students are only looking to benefit from their citizenship in the city? Um, you talk about uh, the, the Londoners needing to make the first step. Um, yeah. What's the student's responsibility uh, when it comes to being a member of the London community? I, uh, students definitely have a lot of responsibility there. I think it, like in our platform we reference the Good Neighbor campaign being dual pronged. So you get the students when they come and you just give them the same message. But I think that... Um, I think at the end of the day, there is that perception in London, and that's what the Good Neighbor campaign is trying to end. It's trying to end the perception of uh, students are only here for their four years, and then they're never coming back. It's, uh, it's trying to say, you know, it's, it's really the goal is to be a good neighbor. So we're trying, like, that's part of it. That's part of the campaign is to break down that perception, I think. That's great. Awesome. So uh, one of the things that we were discussing earlier is that being a president, you have to be willing to make compromises in some of the things that you may have promised before. What are some of the things on your platform that you could see being compromised if you were to go into a um, seat? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I think it's um, a lot of the things listed as our lobby objectives are, are long-term goals. Realistically, um, they're going to they're take a while. So definitely baby steps are going to be necessary throughout the whole process. So things like academic counseling, I don't think we're going to see a massive improvement in the social science line anytime soon, but I think we can get there. I think we can make a small step. Right. Same with uh, the deferral fees and uh, debt pushing back the tuition deadline. Little things, even just reducing the like the deferral fee or uh, pushing the deadline back a couple of weeks. These are kind of steps that we can make to move in the right direction. Um, but it, all of them are big, big, long fights that we need to make sure that we're enacting with the government and with Western to try and make sure it's best for students. All right, well, I think we have time for maybe one more question. Um, we're going to ask you about the uh, SOF Association. Uh, so yeah. uh, We had to get it in there. Um, so um, in your platform, you say that, unfortunately, uh, the USC doesn't have any venue for SOF to, to have their voices heard. Uh, this year, under the VPSC, we brought in some new programs to consult students through World Cafes yeah. and to bring in the opportunity for students uh, who are involved in the OIC program to comment on different issues. Um, I was just wondering if you could comment on whether you think we've done enough um, or whether you think that this is just part of the, uh, part of the strategy. Yeah, I think, um, I think that they, they, this is a good step. Doing a review of O-Week every year should be a big part of the program. I think that lead the leadership teams, the sort of leaders of the sauce, those world cafes have been very engaging. But the ones that were open to uh, general sauce, from my experience, were poorly attended. Um, and what I think we really need to do is to give them a process to advocate for their community. Um, it's right now, I think SOS feel like they are treated like unpaid employees. They're, they feel a bit abused and, um, and they love the program. They wanna be part of it, but they also wanna be respected by the organization that's giving them the opportunity. So mm -hmm. I think that it's, uh, it's mostly a communication tool both ways. It's for SOS to raise some concerns about how they're being treated. And it's also a way for OPC to disseminate information about the values of OE. Because I think there's a huge disconnect there. Would it, would it be fair to maybe say that it's a, it's a little bit unfair to suggest that we have no methods, though? Okay. 
Uh, I would say, uh, previous to this year, I'd say there was no method. So this is the problem, and I think this is generally the issue here, is that you pick a, you pick a head soft, and they're expected to have a managerial relationship going down from the OPC to them, down to the soft team. And at the same time, their soft team's expecting them to be the advocators for their rights going the other direction. So you, as a head soft and a head soft team, are middle managers. You get stuck there. And it's very, very tough. So what I want to do is just take that advocacy stream into a direction and have a constant communication, not just after O week, but during O week, before O week, the whole way through. Thanks. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming thank on. You, sir. Had a pleasure questioning you. Oh, yeah, I had a great time. It was fun. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Bob. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, we'll be right back.